Hi, Jennifer Warren here. And I want to talk a little bit about N NVIDIA today. Um, as we know, their earnings call is coming up soon, Wednesday, in fact. Today is Monday. And I expect there's going to be a lot of articles and things written about them Thursday. So I wanted to do a little um, retrospective. So back in late May, I was I had attended a tech disruption conference at the Richmond Fed, and there was a foremost semiconductor ex chip expert there, and also a foremost LLM generative AI expert. And so it was really kind of the first times I really you know listened and delved into those areas. And then it turns out um, May twenty sixth, that was when Nvidia's stock went from like 300 to 400. And today the stock is roughly trading at $950 a share. So that is a huge meteoric rise. Today in NVIDIA, its capitalization is $2.27 trillion. Um, and it is considered, it is a semiconductor firm and it is now synonymous with AI. And as we know, everything AI related has really, really taken off in different ways for different reasons. One thing about NVIDIA is that what's really one of their claims to fame is um, they their business encompasses the whole tech stack. And I'll show um, some charts in a minute with some peers that kind of will reflect this. Um, and one of the big issues that's been coming up is the fact that AI is going to require a lot of energy. And I had discussed this in a video back in June when I started really realizing the implications of chips and AI and what it was going to mean uh, for energy demand. And now we have seen of late figures such as there's going to be 4% increases in power demand to 2030 because of all the, you know, advanced and intense computational needs um, to do with advanced computing power, including AI. Um, and so that is something that will be interesting to watch because it also seems like a potentially constraining factor. But something that's been happening, and this has been happening in Texas, is Bitcoin mining uses quite a bit of energy as well. And there's a lot of Bit of the Bitcoin mining industry in Texas. And so they've kind of been at the forefront for figuring out how to get power and how to get it more cheaply, how to not compete with other power users. Um, and increasingly, this is the same issue with AI. Um, I, I've noticed that there are some firms that are sort of partnering with NVIDIA to find ways to use energy resources where they don't compete with, you know, traditional users, so to speak. And that is happening using what's called stranded energy assets. And that can be both oil and natural gas assets, but it can also be stranded renewable energy assets. So in trying to assess where this energy demand is going to come from, obviously AI and AI related type um, activities will lead to increases in data centers. And that is supposed to rise 160% according to Goldman. Um, this sort of does jive with the power demand increases of McKinsey's. And both of those estimates go to 2030. Um, the other number I've heard is that utilities will need to spend 50 billion to, to support the increases in data center needs um, to, to power them. Um, just for reference, a chat GPT query can use 10 times the amount of electricity as a Google search. So that just tells you why partly why they're such um, power hogs. Um, and this gets to the whole issue of generative AI. Um, there's a lot of debate about, you know, how much do we need? You know, right now there's a lot of attention on text, right, with ChatGPT, but also 
there's movement into videos and audio and all this. And again, that's going to require a lot of power and a lot of data storage. So that those are the issues. So at what cost is this to society? And, and that's going to come in the form of energy. So it's really difficult to predict how this goes. Obviously, if there's this increased demand for energy resources, it pushes the demand curve differently, which will push the supply curve differently. So in fact, this innovation in AI and generative AI, there's the potential for disruption in the energy sector. And we're seeing some of that. And we're seeing new partnerships that didn't exist before. For example, um, one um, oil and gas producer is, is now um, co-locating with you know, trying to have small scale nuclear modules in their field to power you know, their, their production. Um, so you're seeing different strange bedfellows. For example, another example is on the edges of the Williston basins in Montana and North Dakota, there's a firm that is using waste gas to power data centers in partnership with NVIDIA. Um, so again, you're seeing all of these like decentralized approaches for these new industrial users, if you will. So a question could arise as to how fast does AI and all of the advanced computing power needs of the future, how fast does it change the energy mix? Obviously, a lot of these big tech firms want clean power, and they're finding ways to source it. However, there's, you know, there's limits to, to that. And, and so, so this disruption, you know, could come in the form of nuclear is, is one thought because it offers density and base load and clean power. However, with nuclear power right now in the United States, all of the fleet that we have, one thing that's probably going to happen is that the life of these fleets will be extended. Um, and the other potential is fusion. Um, some say that we're 10 years off fusion. Um, others say that it's closer at hand. Really, really hard to say, you know, what's going to be the breakthrough, though, that does ha ha help this advanced economy phenomenon. But it's not just an advanced econ economy phenomenon. For example, India as well is very interested in being an AI center of excellence. I was at a, a conference a month ago and I heard um, from a uh, a dignitary from India, and they have really big plans to also, you know, very much participate in this, this semiconductor and AI um, segment of the future. And so there's a lot of competition in this. Um, one thing too, I just wanted to mention is that NVIDIA is fabulous, meaning they don't, they don't manufacture their own chips. Um, they get them from other makers like TSM, you know, Taiwan, and also in the Texas Triangle near near Austin, there's a, a Samsung is developing a, a chip plant, and they're spending forty four billion, and it looks like there's not only possibly one plant, but maybe two even on the books. And so, as we see this advent of advanced manufacturing in the United States that also will require more power. So you have all these things working hand in hand. And so I suspect there will be breakthroughs in energy. I don't know where they're gonna come from, but I do know the desire is that it's cleaner power and that it's dense base load that is not intermittent. Um, so we're gonna see a lot of interesting innovations in the future, I, I believe. So really you could consider this, you know, chips, AI, um, advanced manufacturing. It's an industrial revolution ecosystem, if you will. And NVIDIA very much talks about that from their point of view, you know, from their like AI point of view. But this industrial revolution ecosystem is broader than just that. It also includes things like the Samsung chip plant and also the, the Taiwan um, manufacturing one that's, I think it's happening in Arizona. And there's other places where there are chip plants being built. The other thing about NVIDIA and 
And also there was an announcement with Meta today that they're, you know, talking about offering AI for free um, on their platform is that NVIDIA is very much a platform. And that's what everybody wants to be because platforms are sticky and there's all these network effects that happen with platforms. And so I think that also bodes for an interesting future and in energy to do with platforms as well. And this is what the technology world brings to energy, I think, is I think it's it's kind of, you know, shaking things up in interesting ways. Um, for example, we've just seen some really amazing meteoric rises in um, CEG, which is Constellation, uh, which has like 20% of the United States nuclear fleet and NRG, which is a big, big um, utility as well. And I'll show you those. Um, I'll show you those stocks just right now, because it's really, really interesting to see the rise of this. So right here, as you can see, NVIDIA is, you know, this is um, the last year. And as you can see, it's just, you know, the stock's been on a tear. And then SMH is a semiconductor ETF. One of its largest constituents is NVIDIA. And it's it's this um, fuchsia line here, just kind of steady, um, but significant growth nonetheless, seven, almost 78%, much more so than you know XLE, which is just kind of the energy proxy. Um, CEG, again, is Constellation, which has a large nuclear United States fleet. And as you can see here, it's also kind of been tracking NVIDIA's progress, as has NRG, what, what I mentioned before. And this all kind of really went down after the first of the year, after after er earnings. And, you know, it's it's kind of continued on. And I suspect at some point that's that's got to sort of settle down. And this is the other stock I just wanted to show, stock chart. So this is NVIDIA with its peers. And as you can see, you know, it's just, especially since the beginning of the year, it's really just continued on this ascent. And if you look at TSM, you know, the chip manufacturer here, just kind of, you know, steady, right? Steady, but good. Another peer it's done, done quite well. Um, AMD um, up, up some. Um, so that just kind of gives you, but but the bottom line is, is since January, nobody has kept up with NVIDIA and, and they've continued to just kind of, you know, move forward their offering, showing what kind of platform they are, showing where the growth is, showing that this that their um, vision is sustainable. And they just had this conference recently, um, the GTC conference, and they said there was 29,000 press articles. And I thought, I wonder if there was a bunch of uh, AIs doing that. <laughs> um, but no, nonetheless, there's high, high interest. And, and the other Thing that sort of talked about uh, amongst analysts is that you know there will be more competition in the future. Um, Meta, Google, they're all sort of you know wanting to design their own chips and and do things differently to compete and and get the slice of the pie of the future. But for now, Nvidia has been the one that has really really led the pack. I will stop sharing. So just to sum up, obviously with AI, there are many applications for it in the future that could be quite helpful with problems of the commons, such as in climate change. Um, you know, AI can do amazing um, analysis of weather and weather patterns and, and predictive analytics and all this. Um, and also in healthcare, and absolutely. LLMs, generative AI, um, supposed to be quite helpful for enterprises in the future, helping them to streamline information and, and help with, you know, creativity and ideation. But again, you know, the cost versus the benefit, if we're, if we're going to be spending a lot of, a lot more money on power, or if it raises the cost of power for everybody, then there will be some pushback on that. Um, I have noticed just in things I've read too that um, with NVIDIA specifically, some of the work they're doing with their um, their GPUs, um, they're they're going to be more energy efficient in the future. 
and they are now. So, so that's something that I think will happen is that, you know, AI is going to have to get more efficient with energy as well. It can, it can help with optimizing energy usage and, and, and figuring out, you know, how, how we can get this energy mix more optimized in the future. But um, it also, at the same time, cannot compromise the Earth's resources. Um, there, there will be a balance, and there are natural limits to do with resources. So I'm watching all the, all this. You know, what are the use cases? What is, what is truly beneficial to society? What is their supply and demand for? And what will society tolerate with AI? Thank you. And I look forward to speaking at the Seeking Alpha Investor Summit, where I'll talk, talk about this a little bit as well. Thanks.